Hello and welcome back to Noah's Window. Uh, today we're back in chapter 12 of Acts and yesterday we left when Peter has been rescued from prison and the, the angel escorts him through the guard post and out the gate and then just disappears. So now he's like out on the street, I suppose, and he's kind of come to his senses and like, oh, this is real. This isn't a dream. I'm really free. So we're going to pick the story back up then um, in verse 12. When he realized this, Peter, he went to the home of Mary, the mother of John Mark, where many were gathered for prayer. He knocked at the door in the gate, and a servant girl named Rhoda came to open it. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed that instead of opening the door, she ran back inside and told everyone, Peter is standing at the door. You're out of your mind, they said. When she insisted, they decided it must be his angel. There's another example of people believing that. Anyway, uh, it must be his angel. Meanwhile, Peter continued knocking. I can just see so like, <laughs> okay. When they finally opened the door and saw him, they were amazed. He motioned for them to quiet down and told them how the Lord had led him out of prison. Tell James and the other brothers what happened, he said, and he went to another place. Now, just to clarify here, the James here is Jesus' brother, right. James. It's a different James. He would be pastor of the church in yes. Jerusalem. Wow. Well, you know, I think through the years we've all been tempted to kind of laugh at this story, and yet I don't know that I should laugh because I think I probably would have been right along with this church. The church is having a prayer meeting, and they're praying, earnestly praying. Many people are gathered there, and you can hear the prayers go up as they're saying, God, deliver Peter. Please deliver Peter. Lord, we need him. You know, he's so valuable to your kingdom. And, and Father, please don't let what happened to James happen to Peter. You know, as they're praying all these prayers, and uh, in the meantime, God has answered their prayers across town. Peter's out of jail. He comes there and knocks on the door. And, and, uh, and <laughs> Rhoda, bless her heart, uh, she's so excited. Give her credit. She believed. Yes. And, just but, hearing his voice. But uh, she leaves Peter standing there <laughs> at the door. So she runs in there and tells everybody, Peter's outside. Now, here's why we kind of chuckle, because they were praying that God would deliver Peter, but I don't think they really believed that God was going to deliver Peter, because when he when he did, they're like, that's impossible. It you know, it's got to be his angel, and that's, that's a text that requires probably some study. Uh, you know, was, were, were they saying it's his ghost, or were they saying that, you know, they believed that we have guardian angel and mm. I guess they, they said, well, you know, Peter's dead. So his angel's unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> they, they came up with more ridiculous theories. Right. They came, yeah. Right. Okay. Instead of just knowing, no, no, it's Peter uh, mm. standing at the door. Wow. But I, I think about that. How many times have I prayed and um, I really deep down inside didn't believe that God was going to answer that prayer. You know, uh, it's like the old story that preachers used to tell when I was a little boy about a community, a farm community that uh, was experiencing drought. And um, everybody came to pray to a prayer meeting that God would bring rain. And there was a little girl who came and brought her umbrella, you know. <laughs> 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 and, and you know, there's there's praying for the drought to end, and there's praying for the drought to end and bringing your umbrella. And and yeah. uh, but again, I, I as much as I chuckle about this, I surely don't want to poke fun at the church because really they did what they need to do. Right. They're, they're, they kind of remind me of the story of that man that brought his boy to the Lord, and mm -hmm. the Lord said, "If you can believe, all things are possible." And he said, "Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief." Let me go to something that's going to sound kind of quirky, but I think it's very important. It's it's kind of like, you know, holding up a mirror to a mirror. If we look at this story, it would seem like these people prayed but didn't have faith. But that's not true because they prayed, but they had weak faith. Mm. If, if, if they did not have faith, it would be like, well, because we don't have faith, we're afraid to pray. But even in their weak faith, they still, they, they, they express the faith to pray anyway. Mm -hmm. And that is faith. Yes. And, and I, I just want to get across to all of us here that there are times when we're like that, that dad where we say, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and pray anyway. You know, yes. pray as an act of faith. So God isn't measuring our faith i don't believe i yeah. th remember that the the response here is based on god's power 
uh, we do need to bring faith when we pray, but it's God's, it's the God we're praying to. It goes back to uh, when we talk about faith as though it, it's just kind of a, an object that's out there. Um, but it's the object of our faith, whether our faith is weak or strong. Mm -hmm. The object of our faith, the God, the powerful God who made this universe and who's holding everything together, who's working in the affairs of man, who's the great physician, that's the God we're praying to. Right. And however God chooses to answer our prayer, whatever measure of faith we bring when we pray, it's the same powerful God that's on the other end of that line. Right, so if you're worried, if you're filled with anxiety, if you're not even sure you have the faith, go ahead and pray anyway, because yes. that's an act of faith. And even though their faith was was weak, God answered their prayer. That's right. He, he answered. He answered the fact that they called a prayer meeting and prayed, yes. uh, even struggling to believe. God still answered their prayer. This is just a great story. Yes, it is. I'm, I'm glad we're not rushing through this because, like the story of Cornelius, um, it's just a place where you just want to camp and, and mine all these great Bible. So prayers. many different perspectives you can look at it from from different people in the story mm -hmm. and what it must have been like for them. You think about. It. What was Rhoda's life like after this? Do you think she told this story over and over? Oh, I to think she told. She I think she told it in women's meetings. I yes. think she told it to anybody who would listen. <laughs> you know, I was there when I opened the door, and, yeah, and there right. he was. You know, was. <laughs> and God did a miracle. I think everybody told the story yes. that were, that was in that prayer meeting that night. And, and you know, here's the thing: the fact that we we, we hear or read that uh, they were surprised and didn't believe and all those things. These are things that these people shared. That's you right. know, because it, Luke, be recorded for we us, know yes. that Luke has explored these things, yeah. you know, and he's interviewed these people and under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he's telling the stories that they told. But this just, this is great. I love it. I do too. Well, Mary Alice, would you pray for us today? Yes, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for giving us this story to remind us of how powerful you are and that those that seem to be in power um, are still subject to you because you are still God. Yes. I pray that you would be with our Noah's Window family today with each and every one, each and every family. I pray that you bless them, guide them, uh, reach down and provide for them whatever is needed today. And we'll be careful to give you the glory and the honor and the praise. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us on Noah's Window. Thank you for praying for us, Mary Alice. And we'll see you tomorrow. Yes, we love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless.